Yes, today we shall discuss Varshal Salgardam. Before actually going to Varshal Salgardam, we should know what is an adjacency matrix and also we should know what is a path matrix. Let us consider a graph. It is just a three vertex graph. One, two, three are the vertices and there are only three edges. An adjacency matrix will give the information of what vertices are adjacent to what other vertices. So, uh, edges, where are the direct edges, that information it will give. Anyway, we will just find the adjacency matrix for this graph, you will understand it better. Now, the adjacency ma matrix for this graph is as follows, we will just do the adjacency matrix. 1 to 1, is there a direct edge? No. Therefore, it is 0. 1 to 2, is there a direct edge? No. Therefore, it is 0. 1 to 3, yes. Therefore, it is 1. 2 to 1, yes, there is a direct edge. Therefore, it is 1. 2 to 2, no. 2 to 3, no. 3 to 1, no. 3 to 2, yes, there is a direct edge from 3 to 2, 1. 3 to 3, there is no direct edge. Therefore, it is 0. So, <coughs> the number of 1s in this adjacency matrix will be exactly equal to the number of edges in the given graph. So, we understood what is adjacency matrix. Next, we will understand what is a path matrix. Let us consider the same graph. Three vertices are there, three edges are there. Let us consider the same graph. And now, we shall find the path matrix. What is a path matrix? It will give the information of what vertices are reachable from what other vertices. Anyway, I think you will understand with an example. Yes, we will find the path matrix for this graph. Yes. Now, is there a path from 1 to 1? Yes, there is a path. How? 1 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1. Therefore, it is 1. Next, is there a, is there a path from 1 to 2? Yes, 1 to 3, 3 to 2. Is there a path from 1 to 3? Yes, there is a direct edge. Yes. Is there a path from 2 to 1? Yes, there is a direct edge. 2 to 2? Yes. 2 to 1? 1 to 3 and 2 to 2. 2 to 3? Yes. 2 to 1 and 1 to 3. Next, uh, is there a uh, path from 3 to 1? Yes. 3 to 2, 2 to 1. Is there a path from 3 to 2? Yes, there is a direct edge. Is there a path from 3 to 3? Yes, 3 to 2, 2 to 1 and 1 to 3. Yes, this is the path matrix. So now we know what is an adjacency matrix and what is a path matrix. Now directly we will go to the Varshal Salgardam. See, Varshal Salgardam will convert a given adjacency matrix to a path matrix. So input for Varshal Salgardam is an adjacency matrix. Output of Varshal Salgardam is a path matrix. So it converts a given adjacency matrix to a path matrix. That's all. The input for Varshal is adjacency matrix. The output is path matrix. And also, Basically, Varshal Salgardam, the concept is just like this. If there has to be a path from a vertex i to j, either there should be an edge from i to j or there should be a path from i to j via k, meaning i to k, k to j. But only thing is here, k should be varied for all the vertices in graph. If n number of vertices are there in the graph, then k should take a value from 1 to n. k should be varied for all the uh, vertices in the graph. That's what is. The Varshal algorithm says, if there has to be a path from vertex i to vertex j, there may be a direct edge from i to j, or there may be a path from i to j through k. Carefully understand here, k has to be varied from 1 to n when n vertices are there in the graph. Yes, k has to be varied from 1 to n when n vertices are there in the graph. Yes. Now, there is a Varshal's equation also. Yes, the equation is just like this. If there has to be a path from i to j, either there is already a path from i to j or there should be a path from i to k and also there should be a path from k to j, meaning i to j via k. I think with an example it will be more clear. Now straight away we will go to some operation. So let us take the same graph, uh, three vertices and three edges. Now, let us first find the adjacency matrix. So, 1 to 1, no edge, 0. 1 to 2, 
no edge zero one to three there is an edge one two to one there is an edge one two to two no edge zero two to three no edge zero three to one no edge zero three to two there is an edge one three to three no edge zero so we have written the adjacency matrix now from this adjacency matrix we have to get the path matrix now what we will do is we will consider the value of k as one first meaning and also before going to that i have written the idea box also here and i will not explain the idea box i think you should get a feeling of this idea box it is quite simple uh, i will not explain this you will get a feeling of the idea box so straight away we will take k is equal to 1 meaning via 1 is there a path see in the adjacency matrix direct edges are written okay direct edges they are made 1 whereas now we will make 1 if there is a path via 1 for that, whatever ones are there in the adjacency matrix, you have to retain them because already there is a direct edge means it is one only. Therefore, one here, one here, one here, here. Whatever ones are there, we retain them like that. Now, we will compute one to one. See, vertically you see one to one. Horizontally you see one to one. So, what is the value of one to one in the previous matrix, adjacency matrix? It is zero. Therefore, zero and zero is 0 only. Simple. You should do the AND operation. See the idea box. You should do the AND operation. Vertically, you take a uh, 1 to 1. Horizontally also, it is 1 to 1. You do the AND operation. Next, we will take 1 to 2. Vertically, it is 1 to 1. Horizontally, it is 1 to 2. What is the value of 1 to 1 in the previous uh, matrix? 0. It is spinning. Just observe. What is the value of 1 to 2 in the previous matrix? 0. It is spinning. Now, 0 and 0. It is 0 only. So fine, no problem. Next, we will compute 2 to 2. You just see horizontally, vertically. What is the value of 2 to 1 in the previous matrix? 1. It is spinning. What is the value of 1 to 2? 0. What is 1 and 0? 0. Okay. Next, we will compute for 2 to 3. Now, carefully understand. 2 to 1 in the previous matrix is 1. Again, horizontally, 1 to 3 in the previous matrix is also 1. So, what is 1 and 1? It is 1. Next, 3 to 1. So, vertically, 3 to 1. Horizontally, 1 to 1. What is the value of 3 to 1? 0. What is the value of 1 to 1? 0. 0 and 0? 0 only. Next, last value, 3 to 3. Why are 1? So, vertically, 3 to 1. Horizontally, 1 to 3. What is the value of 3 to 1 in the previous matrix? 0. What is the value of 1 to 3 in the previous matrix? 1. What is 0 and 1? It is 0 only. So, we got one more matrix for k is equal to 1. See here, 3 vertices are there. Therefore, we have to go up to 3. k is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, k is equal to 3. We have to compute. Next, let us do for k is equal to 2. Ah, now carefully understand, whatever ones are there in k is equal to 1, they should be retained as it is in k is equal to 2. That is 1, 1, 1, 1. Four ones were there. All the four ones are already uh, there in k. They are retained in k is equal to 2. Now, whenever you are considering k is equal to 2, you have to take the values from k is equal to 1. You should not see the adjacency matrix 0. You should see the k is equal to 1. Now, let us do 1 to 1. Vertically, you see, it is 1 to 2. Horizontally, it is 2 to 1. So, now, what is the value of 1 to 2 in the previous k is equal to 1 matrix? 1 to 2. 0, it is spinning. You can just observe. What is the value of 2 to 1? 1. So, what is 0 and 1? 0. Next, we will compute 1 to 2. Vertically, it is 1 to 2. Horizontally, it is 2 to 2. Yes. What is the value of 1 to 2? 0. What is the value of 2 to 2? 0. What is 0 and 0? 0. Okay, very good. Next, we will do 2 to 2. Why are 2? So, vertically also it is 2 to 2. Horizontally also 2 to 2. So, what is the value of 2 to 2 in the previous matrix? 0. Again, 2 to 2. Again, it is 0. 2 times it is spinning there only. 0 and 0. It is 0. Very good. Next, we will do 3 to 1. 3 to 1, why are 2? That means... Vertically 3 to 2, horizontally it is 3 to 1. What is the value of 3 to 2? Yes, it is 1. 
what is the value of 2 to 1 that is also 1 so 1 and 1 is 1 you make this 1 next you consider 3 to 3 via 2 meaning 3 to 2 vertically 2 to 3 horizontally what is the value of 3 to 2 in the previous matrix 1 what is the value of 2 to 3 in the previous matrix 1 1 and 1 is 1 so we have got another matrix for k is equal to 2 now we have to find the last matrix that will be the path matrix that is k is equal to 3 yes now what is the step whatever ones are there in k is equal to 2 they have to be just brought it down to k is equal to 3 because already there is a path means here also there should be a path yes all the ones there were 6 ones all the 6 ones you have written next we will compute 1 to 1 why are 3 vertically it is 1 to 3 horizontally it is 3 to 1 now when we are computing k is equal to 3 should we take adjacency matrix value k is equal to 1 value or k is equal to 2 value we have to consider k is equal to 2 value immediate previous matrix so 1 to 1 why are 3 1 to 3 3 to 1 so what is the value of 1 to 3 in k is equal to 2 matrix 1 it is spinning what is the value of 3 to 1 yes it is 1 what is 1 and 1 1 very good next we will compute 1 to 2 via 3 meaning 1 to 3 3 to 2 what is the value of 1 to 3 in the previous matrix 1 3 to 2 in the previous matrix 1 what is 1 and 1 1 ok very good next last one 2 to 2 via 3 now what is the value of 2 to 3 in the previous uh, matrix k is equal to 2 1 very good what is the value of 3 to 2 in the previous matrix k is equal to 2 1 what is 1 and 1 it is 1 only so we have got the path matrix we discussed earlier adjacency matrix and the path matrix now you know how the adjacency matrix is converted to the path matrix using Warshall's algorithm I think now you should have got a feel of this idea also so whatever uh, yeah, uh, vertices you whatever number 1 to 3 3 to 2 you have to do the AND operation that is the idea here I think the operation of Warshall's algorithm is very simple next directly we shall go to the Warshall's algorithm what is the input number of vertices n and the adjacency matrix that is the input Output is the path matrix. So, Warshall's n is the number of uh, vertices, ADJ is the adjacency matrix, and PATH is the path matrix. That is the output actually. So, I is equal to 1 to n, J is equal to 1 to n, path of I, J is equal to ADJ, meaning whatever values are there in adjacency matrix, initially they are put to path matrix. The adjacency matrix is copied to path matrix. Yes, initially we have to copy. Yes, we have copied. Now carefully understand, for k is equal to 1 to n, so this is the intermediate vertex that we took, first matrix we took k is equal to 1, second matrix k is equal to 2, third matrix k is equal to 3, so this loop is for the intermediate vertex k, very good. Next i is equal to 1 to n, this loop is for the source vertex i, very good. For j is equal to 1 to n, this loop is for the destination vertex j, oh very good. Now, same Warshall's equation, if there has to be a path from i to j, either already there should be a path from i to j or there should be a path from i to k and also there should be a path from k to j. This is the basic principle of Warshall. So, using that we compute. That is all the algorithm of Warshall. Warshall's algorithm is very, very simple, nothing difficult at all. I think all of you understood the Warshall's formula that is the equation operation of Warshall's also you have understood and the algorithm of Warshall's it is very simple uh, nothing difficult I think all of you should be able to write the code for Warshall in whatever coding language you want